Okay, starting off with our next grouping. Uh, this time we're going to move on to four. And uh, for having four electron domains, so again, well, what we'll do is we'll write all of these different ideas down and then we'll bounce over to the FET site and take a look at them individually from there. So for the geometry here, if we have four electron domains, it is called tetrahedral. And again, if we have four bonding and zero bonding, that is just the same thing, tetrahedral. Uh, a classic example of that, just to write it down here, would be like that one. If we remove one of the bonded pairs and put in a non-bonding lone pair of electrons, that's going to give us a shape, which is called trigonal. I'm just going to write down like this, pyramidal. Trigonal pyramidal. That is not enough, enough room. If we take another one off, so we have two bonding and two non-bonding, that would be bent or angular. And again, to show a couple of examples of some molecules that you're familiar with, this would be ammonia, NH3. And this would be water. It's four bonded pairs every single time. But the way they look and behave is quite different. Let's bounce over to the FET site. And we'll take a look. <clears throat> Here it is. I guess I have to minimize this. There we go. Okay, so this is where we were last time, looking at our little example. So we need four bonded pairs. So I'm going to get rid of this and one, two. There it is. So we have four bonded pairs. Notice the shaping here. <clears throat> so this is what's called tetrahedral. And then just so you know, um, this is the only number that you are supposed to memorize. 109.5 would be the bond angle between any two uh, parts. So I guess this would be the atoms on the connecting side. <clears throat> so between this lone pair and, uh, not, excuse me, not lone pair, but this bonded pair of electrons and any other bonded pair of electrons is 109.5 degrees. Okay, so this is tetrahedral, four moving parts on here. If we knock off one of these bonded pairs and replace it with a non-bonding pair, now, these angles are not true, so they're just kind of putting something there and calling it. This, the reality is, so I'm going to get rid of this. The reality is, is this, notice how we had a, a plane, and it's not in a plane anymore. This lone pair of electrons takes up more space. Notice it gets like half the plane up here, and it shoves the other three down to the bottom. So the bond angles actually between these guys decreases because of each lone pair of electrons. In other words, it's scrunching them or forcing them closer together. Lone pairs take up more space and force the other ones closer together. Okay, let's go back to the shapes. <clears throat> Notice electron geometry does not change. Electron domain geometry, still tetrahedral every single time. Four locations of electrons, one, two, three, and four. Spin it around, there you can see all four. But notice the molecule's shape is quite different. You have this atom here at the top and three others that form a pyramid visually. So you don't see this lone pair of electrons. Let's think of it as invisible. So you have this pyramid, and that's what we actually see. Okay, we can knock off another one and replace it with a lone pair of electrons. And this one you should be familiar with. It looks like a water molecule. So we have two lone pairs of electrons. And again, this bond angle here would be closer together as opposed to these guys up here. These lone pair of electrons force these guys closer together because of their taking up more space. Still tetrahedral, electron domain, but molecular geometry, it is now bent. Okay, so four is done. Let's bounce back over to the notes. And we'll do the next one. <clears throat> Four is done. We're on to five. So five, and if we have five electron domains, it is trigonal. I'm just going to write like this. Trigonal 
by peer um, middle, trigonal by peer middle. And if we just simply start off at the beginning, five and zero, it is the same. Trigonal by peer a middle. I think I spelled that right. Easy enough. Now these are the ones that are a little bit wonky. Uh, if I take off one of these bonded pairs and replace it with a non-bonded pair, you get a shape which is called seesaw. And so I'm not even going to bother. Visually, we'll take a look at it here in just a moment. But that will be the name. If we do this again, three and two, still five total. The shape you will get is T shaped. And one more time, two and three, we will get a shape that is linear. Linear. Okay, let's bounce over. And we'll get rid of these guys, and we need five total, so one, two, three. So we said it was a trigonal pyramidal. I put my by with a Y, so I should have an I there. Oops, fix that, you probably already were aware of that. Um, so if it's trigonal pyramidal, I'm trying to like get the shape here. It's like, how can I represent that? And I'll see if I can grab this and move it. There we go. <clears throat> So if we look at this, trying to get this to move in the right way, that looks like it's set up pretty well. Uh, this is our axes, if you want to look at it, and these other three will move around that axis. Come on. Staying up straight. <laughs> um, that's pretty close. Um, so the other three are going to move around a central axis. And then the, um, actually it looks like it has to go like this. Uh, there we go. The other ones will float around that central axis. So you have one, two, and then three in the back there moving around the center post, uh, position there. So again, you have a pyramid on top and the pyramid below. Now, here we go. If we knock off one of these top ones and add a lone pair, the shape we had here is seesaw, so I'll try to represent it here the way it looks like a, a seesaw a bit. So imagine this is like the top, and you have people sitting here and a person sitting there. The bottom here is the base, and you can kind of like seesaw it up and down. So down, up, down, up, and because I'm messing with it here, it's kind of moving it around. Uh, but you can kind of get sort of, hopefully get an idea. That's maybe a, a pretty good representation. This is where people sit. And then this is the base of the pyramid, or the seesaw, excuse me, right there. So that gives the shape. Notice this takes up more space, and it takes up like the whole half of the plane up here on top. And it forces these guys down here to the bottom. So that's actually kind of how things are moving around. Let's remove another bonded pair and add in another non-bonded to give us that shape of T-shape. So again, these two on top take up more space, and they force these guys down here, and it looks like a T, as far as what you see. Don't forget, the electron domain is trigonal by pyramidal, but the shape, what you see, is T-shape. And then we can do this one more time. And it goes linear. So the electrons, um, the lone pairs, they take in the central plane, separating each other as much as they possibly can. So there's three of them. And again, it's like trigonal pyramidal for those, or trigonal planar, excuse me, for those three guys. And then they force the bonded pairs as far apart as they can. So those guys are separated out that way. Okay, so that is all of five. And this is a decent place probably to take a break. And then we'll come back around and do the last one in this grouping, which is six electron domains.